Today we're taking a look at the visual effects behind our short film, Ghost House. Welcome to Film Rather, so it takes the mystery out of the effects and techniques with some of your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Conley, and if you haven't seen our latest short, Ghost House, go here and watch it first, because we're about to ruin everything. And also, don't forget, we are picking the grand prize winners tomorrow, so you know, tweet and stuff. <laughs> The effect shot happens right away in the film. It's this right here, our Bammy Wham Movers logo on the truck. This add-on was pretty simple and does a lot to make the world exist more. Stark just tracked the truck in Mocha, brought that data into After Effects, placed our logo, added some dirt and wear to it, and then used track mat to place the logo behind the tree since the branches were so dark and the truck was white. If you want more detail on how to pull off something like this, check out this Filmright Extras tutorial that goes in depth on tracking and placing an asset. Oh. Oh, I'm just doing this for a microphone. <laughs> but then, in that same wonder, we move into the living room to find Pam, who's played by the talented Hannah Ward, and hopefully you can't see the visual effect, but it's right here. In this take, her shirt popped up, revealing the mic pack that we had stored there. It's one of the only takes where it happened, and of course, it happens on the best take. So I shot the bat signal out to Sean Mullen, who painted over the mic pack and saved the shot. Again, I'm not gonna go into the process here because it's lengthy, and Sean did a detailed removal tutorial for us on FilmRight Extras right here. Then moving on to the upstairs sequence, I bought this clock off eBay specifically for this scene. I love the character of the analog cube flipping to change the time. Take after take, this thing worked perfectly, but the second that we went to the hero shot of the clock where it actually needed to change time, it decided to stop working. We tried to fix it on set, but after a bit of trying, I decided that we were wasting too much production time and we would just have to fix it in post, which are four words that I really hate to use. But to get the shot the way that we wanted, we ran it as if the clock was changing in the scene and just let it play through Hannah's performance. Again, we shot this one on the Kessler shuttle dolly. My team just propped it up on some Apple boxes to get the right height and we were solid. Then after we got a good take, I jumped in to operate the clock manually while Booth ran the shot again, trying to do it exactly like we did in the main take. So then in post, we tracked the main clock shot again using Mocha and through the same process as the truck, we added the clock face on top of it to get that same analog look to the time change that I really wanted. After that, we moved into the bathroom with this shot. Pam? We pulled this one off again using the Kessler shuttle dolly with the Benro BV-10 head on there, which we had up on some combo stands to get the right height. So now we can dolly right to swap our 180 here, the idea being to switch our perspective on him and visually push the idea that the shadow man might be winning him over. To get the shot, I sat inside of a red tub under the shuttle dolly because me and Booth needed to see the same monitor at the same time, so I'm directing from inside of a tub and reading the shadow man's lines sounding like Voldemort from Harry Potter. Okay. You do what you gotta do, I guess, but now we have a few major problems with this shot. Mainly, you can see the camera and booth, but also there's an alarming lack of supernatural creature, which is where Andrew Kramer came in. Hey, what's up guys? Andrew Kramer here, video co-pilot. Now, when I first started working on this project with Ryan, the challenge was figuring out what the creature would look like. The trick, of course, is how much of the creature do you actually wanna see how much of it do you want to feel? And then how do you get that into the shot? Now, for the creature design, we used After Effects with Element 3D and imported a 3D model of a skeleton along with a skull that kind of looked a little bit evil that we created in ZBrush. I even added a little bit of movement to the arms and to the body just to give it a little bit of life. You know, because um, it was dead. Another challenge was the lighting. We didn't want there to be too much light, so we just used some backlights just to bring out the shape of the figure. And then we used some smoke elements and some custom particles to make it look a little bit more ghosty. Then to give it a little bit of a hazy look, I added some heat distortion, which also helped to cover up the shadow of the camera rig. Now, this shot was an interesting challenge. I actually went back to look at Ryan's message. He said, we only have like three or four shots, all super simple, without them really moving. Now, what I think he meant to say was that he has one super challenging shot where the camera passes by on a dolly while being reflected in a mirror. Now, one thing to note, at that point, I was actually only going to be helping out with the design of the demon creature. So when he sent me that shot, I looked at it and I thought, well, Good luck with that shot. Now, actually, Ryan did something really smart. He shot an alternate version. So just in case there was some technical problem that the shot couldn't get done, he would still be able to complete that moment. Now, the more I thought about the shot, I thought it was such a cool challenge and almost an impossible thing to do. And I thought, man, it would suck if this didn't make it in the movie. So I said, Ryan, 
send me the shot and let me at least try to do it. The nice thing is it actually turned out to be a little bit easier than I expected. Now, to paint out the camera, I brought the shot into After Effects, tracked the background, and then took a freeze frame of the shot where the window is not covered up by the camera. And I also had to do a little bit of hand painting and then just froze it into the shot, rotoed out the foreground characters so that as they passed by it, it would actually just wipe away the frozen frame. So it was definitely a little bit of work, but it was a really Really, really cool shot and I'm glad it made it in the short. If you're a budding filmmaker, entrepreneur, innovator, domain.com is a place to go when the next idea hits you. I know you've heard me say that the list of available domain extensions is growing, but you now have the opportunity to name your site and build your brand in ways that was never before possible. You can choose from a growing list of 400 plus domain name extensions like .com, .org, .design, and .club. And give you some love, they're giving you 25% off their already affordable prices. When you get domain names, web hosting, email, just use the coupon code FILMRIGHT at checkout. When you think domain names, think domain.com. Logo. To get our big payoff shots of the house on fire, I knew we were going to need some practical lighting on the house to really help sell the final effect. But given that this is a lower budget production, we were limited in the amount of lights we had and the amount of power we had to run them. So we had to get this in several passes. First, Booth and his team lit the top of the house. My gaffer, Seth Newell, had all the lights on flicker boxes, which he can adjust all the ways that it modulates the light's intensity, so you get this automated and consistent flicker to the light that feels like fire. Then we set up camera on a Benro 100mm hi-hat, which is just a very tiny tripod, basically, so we could get a really low shot. We got our actors in place and then ran the shot. After that, our first AC, Chase Smith, guarded the camera to make sure that no one touched it for the rest of the time while the team went to work lighting other sections of the house. And we did this several times until we had the different areas lit that we needed, including lighting the actors for one of the passes. And after that was done, it was off to Andrew for some magic movie making. So I got a call from Ryan and it went something like this. Hey, what's up, man? You want me to set a house on fire? No problem. Oh, it's for a movie? Yeah, all right. For the house fire shot, I had a few different plates that they filmed with different lighting setups. And so what I did was cut out the different elements and compose the shot together so that the foreground people were lit up and the windows and the parts of the house were also lit up. Now, luckily I had some unreleased stock footage elements from an upcoming Action Essentials toolkit. And I was able to use those to composite inside of After Effects with some glow and some heat distortion. For the close up fire shot, I even took the lead actor from the previous shot, zoomed it in, and blurred it out so it looked like he was actually in front of that fire. I was looking at some of the comments and somebody said that the fire looks good but there should be more smoke. And I thought, what do you know? And then I saw some guy say, my house burned down and there should definitely be more smoke. And I thought, yeah, all right. Anyways, guys, had a lot of fun working on the shots and it definitely felt good to actually finish something. And I thought, man, I could get used to this. Logo. That's it, Mike Packs, Demons, and House Fires, and a big thank you to Storybook Ranch for being so amazing to work with. They're actually a charity, and they do some amazing things with underprivileged and special needs kids, so if you're interested in donating, definitely check the link for them in the notes below. And again, if you dug the film and you want a lot more, check out our digital download pack for Ghost House on the store right here. It has over two hours of additional content, including an hour plus long onset experience, which has all kinds of deep behind the scenes stuff, like an eight minute long discussion with me and Booth plotting out the scenes upstairs. This is definitely our biggest film pack yet, so check it out on our store. And of course, don't forget about the giveaways. Tomorrow we're giving away the granddaddy of prizes, so post away, but don't forget about the three post a day rule. If you don't know what I mean, go here. The music we used in today's episode came from Musicbed. If you dug the track, check out a link to it in the notes below, and I'll see you guys next week when I fly a ship with arms and work on the moon. Not sure why.